be talking about branching with Git in this particular section. So what are we going to learn? Well, it's not a very big section. There's just a couple of uh, different videos that we're going to show you and some demos, obviously, that we want to show you. But basically, we're going to talk about creating and merging branches in Git. How do you create a branch? How do you merge a branch? How do you do pull requests? And again, pull requests are a way in which you can have teammates do code reviews against your code base that you're trying to commit. So before the commit goes in, you can actually have your teammates do a pull request and check out your code to make sure that it all is getting a second set of eyes and it's following all the correct standards that you've set in place. In this particular video, we're talking about creating and merging branches. So in this particular video, we're gonna discuss different branch methodologies. So what are the things you're gonna learn? Branching methodologies, for one thing. We're going to talk to various different ones that you can set up in Git. And then we're going to talk about branch types. Again, there's various branch types that you can create in Git, and we're going to talk to those. We're going to create branches. Um, we're going to show you how we go out and create a branch. And then merge code in branches and how, how you're going to do that. And so we'll talk a lot to that, and then we'll go out and we'll demo it in our Git bash environment to show you how you would do it through the command line. If you're using other tooling, like a user interface tool, um, which we talked about some of the clients earlier in this uh, course, you may want to use one of those to work with your branching and merging strategy. And again, that's very, very common and very acceptable to do that that way. In fact, for some people, it's just a lot easier to manage it that way. So with that, let's start talking about main branches. Master is the main branch. Okay, that's when you create your repo, you create a master branch. The master head is always production ready state. I always like to think that master is my gold code. Whatever's right there at the head ready to be released at any point in time should be releasable in its gold standard code. If there's ever some kind of issue, disaster, whatever, I can roll that one out and I can install it on all my servers. So again, I know it's production ready. And then we have the develop branch. And in the develop branch, we actually create a develop branch off of master. And this is usually where we start developing our application. And there's a couple different ways in which we can do that. Um, there's some other uh, workflows that we're going to talk to later on in this course. But um, for now, these um, just think of the master develop as a basic workflow that you're going to work with. And so as you can tell from the graphic there, we start with master. And again, we check all our code into master. We've been doing that right now with our Git bash environment when we're going through and doing uh, some of the videos we were actually committing to the master branch. At some point, I want to want to merge that master branch, want to branch that master into develop. So what I do is usually I load up the initial load into main or master. I push that over into develop. And then in develop is where I start doing all the work. That's where I'm going to be doing my check-ins, check-outs do my commits all into the develop branch. My continuous integration would run off that branch, uh, you know, and my continuous delivery might run off that branch for going into uh, dev environments. So again, it all depends on how you're set up. But think of it that way, that develop is the place you're going to do all your work. And then at some point in time, you're going to get to a point where you want to release something. And again, you can merge that back into master and it should be, again, production ready, releasable code. It's passed some tests. It's, it's working right. Uh, maybe you've had, uh, you're working on a team and you've ran some pull requests and got some feedback and everybody's looked at it and make sure that code is right and solid before we can push it out into master. And then we push it to master and get it ready to go through the pipeline, not straight to production, but we get it to go through the pipeline on its way to production. But again, it should be gold standard code in master. And then we have this idea of a feature branch. And usually you get a feature branch off the develop branch. So what you will find is that some people like to develop in a feature-based approach. And so we'll have feature branches for each feature that we're going to add to the application. I like to develop this way. I, I like to have the develop branch, and then I like to create feature branches off of that where I'm going to work on a specific feature. At some point, that feature is going to be done. We're going to merge it back into develop. And we're going to actually, at that point, delete that branch when we do the merge back into develop because I no longer need it. One of the great things about Git is they're lightweight branches, and so I can delete them at will and not really affect the system too much. Uh, whereas in other systems, you could seriously affect the system, such as Team Foundation Servers, TFVC. It's not very conducive to branching uh, in terms of deleting branches. It messes up a lot of different things in the reports and because of the way that it's uh, designed. 
again, that's more of a centralized system rather than distributed. So yeah, so we um, are going to go ahead and then work in our feature branch. Like I said, we're going to get feature complete at some point. We're going to run pull requests. That pull request is going to get looked over and it's going to get pushed back into develop. At that point, then the feature branch gets deleted and we no longer need it anymore. And that's only once we actually have finished that feature. So we should not be pushing the feature branch into develop until we're 100% done with that particular feature. And whatever that definition of done is, for example, it could be I ran all my unit tests. You know, the, the, I did all these manual tests, for example, or some automated tests. It's ran continuous integration for a while. You know, all these things have to be met. These criteria have to be met before I'm going to push it into the develop branch. And one of the things to think about is when we're going about creating this develop branch and this feature branch is to your naming conventions. You want to follow a basic naming convention. For example, what I usually do in a feature branch is I will predicate it with feature. So feature underscore you know, new login or feature underscore new image, whatever it is, you know, uh, whatever we're developing for the application. I always predicate it with feature. The only ones they ask you not to use are master develop, release, or hotfix. And those are targeted for those particular branches already, like the master is already taken. Develop is going to be off a of master. And so we don't want to use that as a you know, convention to any other branch that we're going to create. And obviously release and hotfix are also branches that we're going to bring off of main at some point or master. And so we don't want to use those as a naming convention either. And then typically uh, they exist only in the developer's repos. So again, the feature branch usually just exists locally. Like say the feature gets done, it gets pushed back to develop and it gets, and it gets pushed back to origin at that point. So feature branches don't necessarily have to be in in origin. Now, again, if you're if you're working alone, there's obviously no need for you. You didn't have a remote repository, so you can just do it all local. But at some point, you may want to push it back into the remote repository, and you want to want to have people review it and look at it. Like I say, through a pull request. So again, there's certain times you're going to do it, but typically they exist only on the developer's machine. And the next thing we're going to talk about is a release branch. We um, Usually do a release branch off of develop. Some people do it off of master. I like to release it off master, but we're going to talk about another way to do it today. And that is we're going to release it off develop. So the release is going to be branched off of develop and it's going to have to be merged back into develop and master at some point. So we do a release uh, branch and we get that ready to go. And at some point, we make a modification to that release branch. Okay, something's changed. At this point now, we have to merge it back into develop and into master. I prefer we do it off the master branch. Uh, and again, that's just me. And then I don't have to worry about getting develop involved in it. Um, I can just merge it back to master. Again, whatever works for your team. Uh, you may not even use release branches. Some folks don't. They just, you know, release from master all the time. And whatever's at the head of master is gold code and should be able to go. And so they don't really, they don't branch it for that. Now they may tag it. We talked about tags earlier. Uh, they may tag their code so they know they can go back to it at some point in time, or they can release by that tag if necessary. And the branching naming convention for releases, again, like I was saying on the feature, I predicate mine with release when I'm talking about release branches. And again, it gets ready for that new production release. So basically we're preparing to get the release ready to go. And so we're actually, you know, working on it, getting everything ready. So when it's production ready, we then merge it back into master and develop, depending on how we set it up. It could be just master, master or develop. And, and it's ready to go at that point out into the release. And then we have the hotfix branch. Usually a hotfix is branched off a of master and it must merge back into develop and master. And the reason being is because we branch it off master and then we do modifications in a hotfix branch, at some point we have to push it back into the development cycle. So by pushing it to master, it doesn't really get it into the developer's tools, you know, in their repos, so locally. So we have to push it to develop so that developers, when they do a get, will actually be able to get any changes we made in the hotfix branch and incorporate those into the system uh, going forward. And again, the naming convention for that is hotfix. And like, like I was saying before, we have uh, 
we predicate it with hotfix, so can't use that in any other way. You'll notice here by the image that we have the master branch and it's tagged 1.2, and then you can see that we've branched it to develop, but we also branched it for a hotfix. So we're working along here, we're working along, and then they realize the release the master that was branched into develop has a bug in it. So what they do then is they take master and they branch it into the hotfix. Um, and fix that bug in production and then push it back out to production. Um, so if there's a bug in production, they branch it, they work on it as a hotfix. Meanwhile, developers are in another stream working. And at some point we take that hotfix and push it back into master. But not only do we push it back into master on its way, we actually also push it back into develop so the developers can incorporate those bug fix changes in their code and the application gets updated. And lastly, hot fix branches are very much like release. Uh, they are also preparing for a new production environment, but these are usually unplanned types of releases. So a hot fix is usually like we showed here. It's a bug. Something's gone wrong. We have to release a patch for whatever reason. It's usually unplanned work goes into a hot fix that gets released. So with that, let's go look at our git bash environment and show you how in the command line, how we could do some branching strategies and branching and merging with Git. Okay, so I'm back here in our dev environment and this is our Git bash environment for our demo. I've ran some commands here, so we're gonna walk through a few of them. We CD'd into our repo, Git status. I wanna just get a status of that repo where we're at. And again, we're in the develop branch. Comes back and says there's a modified file, but it's not been added, so no changes on the stage for commit. So I do a Git add and then I come down here and do a Git commit. You have to have the message in there, so it's hyphen M for the message. Merged, uh, I mean, uh, committed the doc4.txt to the develop branch. Okay, so you can see here the file went in, one change file, so we're all good. So then what I wanna do is I wanna do a merge. So what I do is I come down here and I do a git merge develop. You can notice here I'm also in the master. So the first thing I did was I did a git checkout master. That switches me to the master branch. Now I want to merge develop into master. And then, so how I do that is I go git merge develop hyphen M for the message and the message. I do that and you can see here that two files were changed for that particular thing. So we're uh, pretty well set here. So what I want to do is I want to actually go in and see if we can see all the file changes in our particular branch that we're working in. Okay, so what I've done here now is I've listed out the contents of a file. So I switch back to the develop branch and I list it out uh, to show git for.txt. Uh, that's, that's the command to show the contents of a file. So you come down here, it gives you some information about the file. You can see here's a line in the file called, this is the fourth file. That was the original contents of the file. I made a change and I merged master 12. That was the message I added into the modification I made to that particular file. And then I did, so now we know in develop, we have, I committed it and we have this merge master uh, 12 line in our doc4.txt, we're good to go. And so at this point now, when I go back to master, I should see my changes go into master when I did the merge. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna do a checkout so let's do this. Let's do a checkout and I'll come back and show it to you. All right, so I'm back here in the master branch now. You can see by here, did a git checkout master. That's how we switch our branches. And then in here, I can actually do a git show dot four dot text, which is in there. And we show that and you can see that change is merged to master 12 is in there. So that shows that my changes that were originally in only in the develop branch are now been pushed back into the master branch. And again, we can make more changes and merge them back into the particular branches. So again, I could CD back to my develop branch, do some work there, and then make changes. So down here, I could actually do a uh, git checkout develop, go back into my develop branch. I can make some changes to a file, and then I can show you how we can do some work with it after that. Okay, so I made some modifications, and in here, we are going to actually do a couple things. So I did a git checkout feature up here at the top, changing from the develop branch into the feature branch, switch to the feature. We can see we're in feature branch. I showed doc4.txt, and you can see down here, um, we have this merge master 12 and merge, and this is the fourth line or fourth file. Those are the two lines of code that are in the, the particular file. Then I did, I made a modification to it and I did a git add 
doc4.txt. I added a new line of text. And then I do a git commit with the commit message. Commit a change to feature. You can see it committed it. Then I do a git show doc4.txt again in the feature branch. And I come down here and you can see now we've added this new line feature merge. So now when it changes are in feature branch, okay? So then what I do is I go back to the develop branch doing a git checkout develop and I list out or show the contents by doing a git show doc4.txt in the develop branch. And if we look at it, you can see we only have the two lines of code here. This is the fourth file and merge to master 12. Those are the only two lines that are in there. So then what I do is I do a git merge feature. I'm in the develop branch now. So I get a, do a git merge feature and it merged those changes. And you can see here, fast forward stock4.txt merged those changes into feature. So then what I did, or the develop, I mean, from feature. And so then what I did was I have a git show doc4.txt on the develop branch still. And you can see we did a commit. There's our commit message that we just committed. And you'll notice here now that we actually have the three lines of code right here, right here, and right here in our develop branch. So we successfully took our feature and merged it up to develop. At this point, we're really done working with our feature branch. All the changes were made to it. It's all ready to go. So then what I do is I come down here and I just run the git branch hyphen D and then the name of the branch. And that's going to delete the branch for me. And you can see the deleted branch feature uh, happened. So now you can see we've actually made some changes. We branched, made some changes in our feature branch, merged it back into develop, and then deleted that feature branch. And that's a typical basic workflow that a lot of teams will work with when they're working with Git. So with that, let's go back and round up. All right, so what did we learn in this particular video? Well, we talked a little bit about a branching methodology and lightweight branching structure. Uh, we, it's a basic Git branching structure with a feature branch and a develop branch. And then we talked about branch types. We talked about how you would create a feature branch, a hotfix branch, even a release branch. And then we have those predicated with the name. So I, for example, feature branch would be uh, predicated with the name feature. And, and then the feature's name. So it could be feature underscore, you know, new login or whatever we're working on. And then we actually did the thing of creating branches. We went into Git Bash. We showed you how to create the branch. You showed how to merge the branch back in once we've made changes to feature and how we deleted feature because we no longer needed it anymore. So that really was the flow of how we're going to work with a basic workflow in Git branching. Now there's a lot more complex branching strategies out there and we're going to talk to the workflows later on in this course. Uh, there's a few different workflows we want to address that are a little more complex than just this basic workflow. So join us as we get into that later on in the course.